Hello everyone, welcome to Game Tech UK and this video which I've been dying to make for you which is myself unboxing here in this video a brand new in the box 36 year old personal computer. Let's get on with today's video. This is the computer in question and it's a Toshiba HX10. Now this didn't come to our shores until about 83, 84 and didn't really start making traction in the UK specifically until about 1985, 86 at which point it received a huge price reduction. This was Japan's answer to what was going on in the UK, across Europe and in America as well and that was the real success of the Spectrum, the Commodore and the Amstrad each one of those having something in common and that is their own specified version of BASIC their own peripherals and their non-compatibility with one another Japan wanted to bring out the MSX which was a microcomputer software exchangeability apparently that's what it stands for and the idea behind that was Sony, Sanyo, Hitachi or Toshiba could build individual machines that are very different but with the same architecture and compatibility underneath the hood. Now Sir Clive Sinclair was understandably quite protective of his invention, the Spectrum, and this was his response when he was accused of being the non-standard. Uh, that last year. Right, the non-standard, it's, it's our standard, it's, and, yes. and you could say that the Spectrum is non-standard, but uh, you know, because it's the most popular machine by far, then it is a standard in its own right. Now in Japan this was a huge success. They really liked the idea of having that compatible architecture, the operating system and peripherals but with the individual look and style of each brand of machine and it makes perfect sense and it is the forerunner to what we've got today which is the IBM compatible PC. But unfortunately for Toshiba in particular and MSX brand as a whole in Europe, in the UK and in the States, the market share of the Commodore, the Amstrad and the Spectrum was so big by the time this got the price cut that it really needed to be a success. Unfortunately, things were already moving on to the 16-bit era. Now, when this came to the shores of the UK, it was £279, and that was on par with what was available. But the thing with what was available, it had brand recognition. Everyone knew the Commodore, everyone knew the Amstrad or the Spectrum. This was really struggling at that price because people didn't understand it. There was a mystery involved in this Japanese machine. So, late 1984, there was a huge price drop down to £99, along with this advert. Hello, Dad. Can I have a computer? What you need, son, is a <laughs> up the hooter. Computer's gonna cost me a leg and an arm. Not the Toshiba pack. Stay calm. Cost me a bomb. Things you need later. They're all thrown in. Keep your shirt on, Peter. What happens next year when it's out of date? No chance, Dad. This is MSX, mate. If all that's true, I'm the Queen of Sheba. And say hello, Tosh, to a new Toshiba. Oh, the days when computer adverts were actually fun and something that, especially as a kid, you would look forward to the new computer advert. But my own personal sort of history with this machine, this was the first personal computer in my home. The first computer that I owned was the Amstrad, but this was a sort of family computer connected up to the TV. And this PC was as powerful as the big boys out there, like the Commodore 64 and the Amstrad. It just, because it didn't have that audience and the following, I mean, it had a cult following, but it didn't have the mass following. It meant that whenever you went into a computer shop, you'd have a massive section for Spectrum, Amstrad, Commodore, and the poor old MSX would just be a very small selection in the corner. But I don't want this video to be a history of, that's not what it's about. This video is about unboxing, having the privilege to unbox a time capsule from 36 years ago. And this was a lucky eBay find. And I must say a massive thank you to the members of the channel because your money goes towards buying things like this for the channel for the room so I can share it with you. So like I say, this is a time capsule that's just been waiting for me to unbox it for you. We're gonna start by having a look around the box. I've always found the box art, particularly on the 8-bit era, to be so nostalgic and so exciting because it was exciting. This was the first time all of this stuff was happening. So we're gonna have a look around the box. I'll get all the contents out, which I will do for the first time. I haven't looked at them. I wanted to wait until this video. So grab yourself a cup of tea, relax and share my passion in the golden age of PCs, which was the 8-bit era. So let's get the box out. 
So let's start with the front. Now the first thing you will notice, there is a little bit of sort of deterioration. I mean, it is cardboard after all. So you'll see in a moment that the interior contents of this are absolute perfection and as new. So the box has taken the brunt of protecting the contents, but that's not a problem. So if we have a look at what you was presented with, really, if you went into WH Smith's or your local computer um, shop, you were presented with what it included. Now, a little bit different here. This one was presented as a whole package. So not only have we got the PC and it's a beautiful looking PC for the time period. You also got the cassette. You got some software. Now you can see the software was pretty poor that it came with. That is not a good example of what this machine can do. It can do way better than that. You also got some uh, literature as well on how to get the best out of your MSX. You got two plugs, obviously one for the PC and one for the data corder. And you've got a screwdriver because back in these days, they didn't even come with plugs fitted. So that's the front of the box. On the side, we've got this old sticker. Now, this is probably from a computer retailer of some sort. Um, it actually says the order number on there, the cost of retail, which is $99.95. So I imagine that this particular unit didn't sell at the original 279 price and it was reduced to 99.95 but this was in the days when they didn't mind having a go at their competitors and trying to convey to you which you know was was absolutely crucial to the Toshiba and the success of this particular package why you should choose it and it would give lots of comparisons to the Amstrad the Commodore Sinclair Acorn Electron or the Atari 800 and it would give you a sort of summary of what these things particularly mean because you know um Colours, sprites and, you know, joystick ports. This was all brand new to people. Absolutely brand new. And the amount of RAM, the amount of ROM, the separate video memory was just baffling to 99.9% .9 of people that were going into the shop to for the first time to buy this for themselves, the family or for children. So in a way, it was really great. For example, we've got 64, um, it's got 64K. Actually, that's not strictly true. By the time it's loaded up the operating system, you was only left with 28K to actually play with. But at the time, that was absolutely ample. And it would say the Spectrum Sinclair was 48K, the Electron had 32, and it would give you a summary. More RAM memory equals more sophisticated program. So that was actually a really good um, summary screen or summary sort of chart of why you should buy this over the competitors. The other end of the box talks more about this specific model and what it includes. Now, the first sentence here is, in a way, certainly for the UK, America and Europe, is what the problem was with this machine. Now, it says here, compatible with all MSX hardware and software, the computer format of the future. And they was right to a certain extent. The computing sort of industry did need some kind of standard. But... It says compatible with all MSX, and this really outside of Japan, or certainly outside of mail order, uh, you know, really, really exclusive, specific magazines that you could get to order other MSX stuff into the country yourself. This really was the only MSX that made it onto the shores of the UK, Europe, and America. So being compatible with all MSX really was a bit of a red herring with this particular computer, because it was the only MSX. So then we get on to the spec sheet of what this PC actually includes. And this little um, sort of spec sheet here, if you like, with the RAM memory, the video memory, this has stood the test of time because even when you look at a, a new PC today, you want to know how much RAM, how much video, all the details of the PC. So this was actually quite forward thinking in the way that it's laid out because we still use this today. But it's got 64K of RAM memory. Now, like I say, that's a little bit misleading because even like today, once you load the operating system, you know, you lose some of the system and that went down to 28 k 16k of video ram now this was for um, your sprites and your games that was important 32k of rom it's actually got a rom cartridge slot as well which the other competitors didn't have although again outside of japan it was really really hard non-impossible 
certainly in your local computer shop, to find a cartridge to fit into this machine. 32 sprites, 16 colours. I mean, when you see this stuff, 16 colours, I mean, it's just... It's just, oh, it's just the, the golden age of computing. It's got a cassette recorder interface, the actual PC, high resolution graphics. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's got a Centronics printer interface. Now, a lot of the PCs at the time, um, you was unable to get things like printers. So that was actually really, really useful. And it's got a full 73 stroke keys twin joystick ports they're standard ports as well so you could put any joystick in there and of course it's got the connector lead up to the tv as you saw from the picture this package itself does come with everything you need really to get everything working and it comes with the data recorder you've got some information bits there but it really is just a standard cassette recorder you've also got a really nice book included as well now some of them you know particularly the amstrad did actually come with quite a comprehensive guide on how to use a machine and basic in particular but i remember this being quite good so i can't wait to get that out the package also comes with three titles of software the first one is breakout um, which is a the great computer adventure actually it was pretty good then we've got chess uh, and we've got teach yourself basic now in terms of what was available at the time and how people would go into something like wh smith and compare which one you think they should buy software was a massive driver and if you refer back to the amstrad the spectrum and the Commodore, they all come, particularly the Amstrad, with a massive library of software. This comes with three titles that were okay. One of them was just a teach yourself sort of a more extended um, version of the booklet that you were already getting. And a lot of people didn't play chess. So really, for a lot of people, it was just one piece of software. That wouldn't have been a problem if software was readily available. But like I say, if you go into your computer shop, there was just a small selection of MSX software. So the lack of software was a big part in the downfall of this PC. So in terms of looking at the box, that's pretty much it. And you can see a little bit more dog-eared up here. But this outer box has done a fantastic job of protecting the contents. So I'm going to get the contents out now so we can start getting to the meat of this video. There's two sleeves in here. Half of it is the accessory sleeve and half of it is the PC. I won't film me wrestling with it to get them out. So the, let's get the interior contents out and start looking at this time capsule. So I've got both the products out of the box and you can see what a great job that outer box has done of protecting all of the lines of this beautiful, beautiful time capsule. I need to try and not get too excited about this beautiful product in my gaming room. So this was the accessory sleeve. Now, like I say, back in the day, you did not have plugs connected to your electrical items be it a hoover a food processor um, whatever it was now that that screwdriver has obviously never been used never been touched we've got two plugs as well now these are super plugs apparently but yes that's what they've called them um, so you get two two plugs one for the data corder and one for the actual pc and of course you get instructions which you would need most people don't even know how to put a plug on that because you don't need to know next up we've got the software that we spoke about now this is breakout and of course it's got the proper cellophane on there which is amazing i mean you know most of these uh, purchases would have been brought home ripped out the box the box might have even been chucked away to have this time capsule i feel so privileged to be unboxing this for you right now it's a uh, it's a huge moment um, especially if you love your retro stuff. This is the um, Checkmate. Now, this would have stayed sealed for a lot of people because a lot of people don't play chess, but you can see it's all sealed. Um, we've got a little card there for the Breakout Adventure. Again, just untouched. Absolutely still shiny, still untouched. You've got Teach Yourself Basic. Again, all wrapped up in the cellophane as it should be, completely and utterly untouched over the last 36 years. And we've got our included free, um, the C10 blank cassette. That's still in the box, obviously never been used. Oh, this is, this is crazy. I feel so happy unboxing this. You would not believe how how just oh how nostalgic this is making me feel. This is brilliant. This is an absolute time capsule.
Then we have that magazine or the, the sort of booklet that we spoke about earlier, Getting the Best from Your MSX, A Beginner's Guide to Home Computing. You could actually buy this separately for 4 95 but it was included in this package. And I'm not going to pull the pages back too far because you can see it's completely and utterly for 36 years old. Oh, I love it. And this was a really good magazine, actually, because you would work your way through it and it would tell you what you're doing, why you're doing it. And you would learn something from typing it in and this, you know, getting that machine to do something for you and going off piece a little bit, you know, typing in one of the programs and sort of studying it and then changing it to personalize it to you was such a great moment. It really, really was. And it was a special moment in computing because this is where it all started. You also got this little pamphlet as well, which was a guide to over 200 MSX software titles. I think they should have really, if there was 200 available at the time, I think on the outer edge of the box, they should have really included that there is over 200 bits. They didn't really sort of shout loud enough for that, in my opinion. But again, this is just, this is, this is lovely to read. It really, really is. You know, and games were still quite costly back then. Uh, Antarctic Adventure by Konami, that was fourteen ninety five. You've got a database which was forty pound. I mean, software. You know, we complain about games these days, but it's you know, software really. You know, without software, the machine is useless. And you know, decent software is always commanded a decent price. You've got a word processor for thirty nine ninety nine because, of course, you know, we all know that games sold these machines, but. There was people trying to use them the best that they could in their business. But yeah, you got loads of uh, all sort of stuff that you could you could buy. Now, again, it was a little bit frustrating looking through um, these magazines because a lot of this stuff, there might be 200 available, but there's certainly not 200 available down your local computer shop. That is, I remember having Hyper Rally uh, by Konami on cartridge. That was the only cartridge we had. And you felt so futuristic, which I suppose it was, because obviously after that, you know, you had Super Nintendo and it all went cartridge based for a little while. But yeah, this is um, so nostalgic looking through here. And, you know, night budget accounts, £28, £28 for stock control. There's a lot going on here. A lot of software is around seven, eight pound. It seems to um, be the sort of uh, sort of go-to price. Yeah, really, really good. Oh, one of my favourite games of all time, Boulder Dash six ninety five. I had that on pretty much every PC that I've ever owned. Oh, this is fantastic. But yeah, another booklet, completely and utterly brand new. So now that leaves us with the cassette recorder. Let's get that out and have a look inside. So as you can see, this uh, it took me a while to get it out of the polystyrene because in later years, polystyrene usually had a, um, a circle underneath where you could sort of push your finger up to help you get the product out so you protect the polystyrene, but it didn't have that. So I had to just really, really take my time. But look at this. I must be the only person in 36 years, apart from the person that put it in the polystyrene, to pull it out. And every every single corner is just so spot on and clean and protected there she is inside so let's get that out and have a look so i've been very very careful not to break any of the polystyrene been very very careful with it um and here is the cassette recorder if it was sealed i wasn't going to open it but it wasn't sealed it was just tucked um sort of behind so if i just pull you pull that out and show it to you i think there is a little fingerprint up there i'm not going to touch that because that could have been from the factory 36 years ago which is just crazy to think about but this was um this was branded toshiba so you've got a, you know it feels like you've got a full set and it's battery driven as well if you want it to be or of course you've got the uh the power plug that comes with it but you do need to put the plug on we've got the um hx c810 instruction manual um, which shows you exactly how to use it, how to rewind your um, tapes and look after them. But yeah, that's the cassette recorder, and that is what you would use to put your games, your software, onto your PC so you could enjoy them. So I think it's time, because I can't wait any longer, to get the main PC out of the box and share it with you. So here it is. If you've made it this far into the video, this is what you're here for. This is what I'm here for. I haven't opened this. I wanted to share it with you. Um, I'm not going to bend that back too much. I wanted to share it with you here on the video for the very, very first time. And there it all is. Wow. There's history there. There is 
the hobby that we know and love you know this is the this is the grassroots okay this wasn't the first sort of wave of home computer you know that was the zx80 the zx81 you know when this come out you know PC and micro computer, micro personal computer was in full flow. There's no doubt about that. This didn't this didn't invent anything, but this is grassroots for offering variety options and just alternatives. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the camera down and I'll get this out. So we've got this sort of um, cardboard sleeve that looks like contains the books. You've got another um, uh, cassette tape in there. And you've got some other little bits in there. And of course, you've got the power lead. I'm not going to open this because to do that, I would need to break the um, sellotape sort of protective seal. Uh, but that slides down into um, the actual package. And you can see the, the cable there. I hope you don't mind. I'm not going to... I'm not going to open that. I don't think we're going to get anything from opening that. And I want to keep it in as original condition as I possibly can. Now, this is what I was talking about with regards to this being a time capsule. This is completely and utterly sealed. As you can see there, it's all sealed and sellotaped. I mean, what, what a privilege it is to enjoy something that everyone would have enjoyed mid-80s in 2021 to be able to still sort of get this out of the polystyrene um, and, and look at it in, in its original packaging is an absolute privilege. You know, it's, it's almost beyond words. I absolutely love this machine. I've got a lot of love for it from a nostalgic point of view. I can remember some good times at home with my dad programming on this one. And when I got my Amstrad, I would connect my um, Amstrad up next to him and we would type out basic programs that you know real good times revolving around computers i don't know whether to get this out of the actual cellophane or not i'm really in two minds i sort of want to but it's going to mean breaking the um cellophane there i'm not worried about the value of it the value of it is in its sort of um time capsule sort of uh, condition i wish this now was a live stream because i would ask you if you think I should open it up. I sort of want to, but I don't want to. I, I love the fact of, you know, looking at it like this. I love the MSX um, logo. And I like this sort of, you know, really sort of oddly placed. Uh, I remember this specifically. Made in Japan. Just a real basic sticker there at the front. You know, it really did add that sort of mystique to this, um, th this PC. You know, it's a full 73 um, key keyboard. You've got the computer... HX10 up there, 64K. This was the cartridge slot, so like I say, Hyper Rally, we have one um, cartridge, and you would turn it on, there would be no loading, it would be an instantaneous thing, which was really, really exciting back in the day. If we look on the right-hand side of the machine, we've got two joystick ports. These were standard ports, so you could put your Kempston, you could put anything you wanted to in there. It did have a proprietary um, printer connection, but of course their, their argument was this might be proprietary to them, but it's standard across the whole board of the MSX range. So if you had a printer on another MSX, you could just come along, put the interface in, and start printing. On the left-hand side, we had a single on and off switch. The keyboard itself, in fact the whole thing is quite flat, I mean nowhere near as flat as the Spectrum but it's got a lovely feel and a motion to the keys, you can hear them. You know, really, really professional, well put together package. This was not a um, cheapy package, this had, this was oozing quality, I do remember that about it. You know, you could sort of say how well built it was and the smell coming out of this electronic area. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I love my smell of old electronics. That is one thing that's making me want to unwrap this, is that I can smell the actual power supply. I do remember, actually, I remember long, long periods late at night playing what I think is actually one of the most underrated games of the 8-bit era, and that is called Sorcery. Now, I don't know if anyone in the comments section will remember Sorcery. It's absolutely fantastic, but I do remember, you know, putting my hand on this particular section and feeling how hot this poor machine was getting. Uh, it never actually shut down through heat, but you could feel that it was getting really, really hot. But I don't think, I, I think I've just made my mind up that I'm not going to open this up. I think it's best left exactly as it is. It survived 
36 years of not being open. So for me to rip that um, cellophane open, I think would be just a huge shame um, for the overall sort of um, historic value of this particular computer. So I hope you agree with that. I'm sure if this was a live stream, I would have got some sort of live feedback, but I'm not going to open it. I'm going to leave as it is and just enjoy owning and in future live streams we can always get it back out and go through a live unboxing but i really have genuinely enjoyed unboxing this for you and for me it's probably gonna sit up there i mean there's my amstrad there that is my original amstrad that's my oldest possession up there that i had when i was 11 years old and some of my favorite software like ghostbusters dragon's lair and super cycle and of course harrier attack if there's enough space there i think i will just put this box up there just to remind me that i own it and i'm lucky enough to own this i can't stop touching it <laughs> it's just um yeah i mean if you if you love your computer stuff like i do you'll know how important this actually is in its current state obviously if you don't you might just think what is he going on about but hopefully if you've made it this far into the video it's because you've got a love for this 8-bit era as much as i have so there you go, that was the unboxing for us of the 36 year old brand new in the box Toshiba HX10. I would love to turn the comment section below into a nostalgic conversation about what PC you had first or where you experienced it first, where you brought your PC first, all, all the lovely stuff of where computing began. I would love to hear that in the comments section below. Also, if you're way too young to remember this, what do you think of this stuff? I'd love to know in the comments section below. But that is it, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this retro video. I'm going to just go and cherish this for a little while before it goes back in the box. Have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one.